Sir Tra, the Bodhisattva, upon hearing this most supremely subtle wonderful ground, in their minds thoroughly were pure and were happy, each and every one. They all arising from their seats, swat up and dwelt in empty space, everywhere scattered wondrous flowers, and simultaneously spoke these words of praise. Good indeed, O treasury of fire, greatly wise and who has no fear, well have you spoken of these grouse dharmas practiced by the Bodhisattvas. Moon of liberation Bodhisattva, knowing the assembly's minds, were pure and that they wished to hear the second crowd. All the characteristics of his conduct, right then requested Vada Treasury, greatly wise one, we wish that you would speak, disciples of the Buddha, all would like to hear about the dwelling on the second crowd. Commentary When the Bodhisattvas had heard, the Vara Treasury Bodhisattva discussed the drama of the first crowd, the crowd of happiness. Upon hearing this most supremely subtle, wonderful crowd in their minds, they thoroughly were pure. The minds of all the bodhisattvas were pure, free of any false thoughts, and they were happy, each and every one. Their minds were totally happy. They were arising from their seats, soared up and dwelt in empty space. They all physically ascended into empty space and everywhere scattered wondrous flowers. All of them in empty space scattered flowers as offerings to Vara Treasury Bodhisattva, saying simultaneously, Good indeed, O Treasury of Vara. They said, Good indeed, Vara Treasury Bodhisattva, greatly wise and who has no fear. You truly are a Bodhisattva of great wisdom courageously, heroic, and without the least bit of fear. Well have you spoken of these grouse dramas practiced by the Bodhisattvas. You have well spoken about the dramas on the ground of happiness. Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva, knowing the assembly's minds were pure, and that they wished to hear the second ground, made a request. The discussion of the first crowd was over, and everyone still wished to hear the dramas of the second crowd, with all the characteristics of its conduct. They wanted to know all about the second crowd's drama dolls, how to cultivate them, what kinds of states one has, and what fruits one obtains. And so, Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva right then requested Vara Treasury. He immediately asked of Vara Treasury Bodhisattva, Greatly wise one, we wish that you would speak. He said, Oh, one of the great wisdom, you, Vara Treasury Bodhisattva, all of us would still like you to continue your discussion of the dramas of the Ten Grounds, disciples of the Buddha. All would like to hear. All the great bodhisattvas wish to hear about the marks, characteristics, and states of the second ground, about the dwelling of the second ground. They would like. They would all like to continue and cultivate dharma doors of the second ground. I want to say something here about the problem of holding precepts versus not holding precepts. To cultivate the way is not easy. No matter how much someone tells you to cultivate well, you still refuse to go forward and make progress. Yet, when it comes to doing that, you do not require a teacher. You yourself know how to do it. When you hear about the way it sounds so fine, there are so many subtle and wonderful states. However, one must practice over a long period of time, and it may happen that one encounters brambles and thorns, tigers and wolves. If one lacks um, great spirit of fearlessness and patience, it is very difficult to reach the goal. As to holding precepts, while there are many people who take the precepts, there are very few who do not break up or violate the precepts. To keep the precepts, 
very purely also is not easy then should one simply not keep them if you were not going to keep them then why did you take them in the first place scrupulous holding of the precepts is extremely important especially for those who have left the home life the buddha at the time of his nirvana said take the precepts as your master there is also the phrase the precepts are the basis of unsurpassed body you should with one mind purely hold the precepts how does one hold precepts first you should not be selfish and not calculate for yourself in any way you should not kill not steal not commit sexual misconduct not engage in false speech and not take intoxicants you should skill scalpel Firstly, observe the rules which disciples of the Buddha should observe. Do what you should do regardless of the difficulty or the suffering involved. Do not do what you should not do. Do not be greedy for fame or profit and offerings. Hold and maintain the conduct of pure precepts in your cultivation. If you fail to do what you should do, that too is a violation of the precepts. We who cultivate the way should at all times return the light and reverse the illumination. We should take a good look at ourselves and alert and alarm ourselves. If we make mistakes, we should correct them and resume our solid holding of the precepts. It is like crossing the sea in a life raft. If the life raft springs a small hole, it must be repaired quickly. If neglected and not repaired, the small hole will become large. With a large hole, the raft will start to leak and eventually will sink and your life will go down along with it. This is greatly to be feared. Therefore, I hope that everyone will be especially attentive to the matter of holding precepts purely and then the precept protecting spirits will at all times accompany you and ensure that you peacefully and safely traverse the road of cultivation. Sutra At that time, Vara Chajuri Bodhisattva addressed Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva, saying, Disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva who has already cultivated the first ground and who wishes to enter the second ground should give rise to ten kinds of profound minds. What are they? They are a proper and upright mind, a compliant and yielding mind, a mind able to endure, a tamed and subdued mind a still and quiet mind, a completely good mind, an unmixed and unscattered mind, a mind with no hankering or yearning, a vast mind, a great mind. The Bodhisattva using those ten minds attains entry to the second ground of living filth. Disciples of the Buddha, when the Bodhisattva dwells upon the ground of living filth, his nature of itself leaves all killing far behind. He does not collect knives or staffs. He does not cherish resentment or hatred. He has shame and he has remorse. He is endowed with humanness and reciprocity towards all living beings who have a life he always brings forth thoughts of benefit and kindly mindfulness. This Bodhisattva would not with evil mind even trouble living beings. How much the less give rise to heavy intent and actually kill or harm any whom who he realizes are living beings. Commentary at that time when the great assembly of Bodhisattvas and Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva had finished speaking the previous verses. Varachajari Bodhisattva addressed Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva. Varachajari Bodhisattva spoke to Moon of Liberation Bodhisattva, saying, Disciples of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, the Great Bodhisattva, cultivates the Bodhisattva way and accumulates all kinds of gurus and is one who has already cultivated the first ground. 
He is one who has already cultivated and certified to the position of the first ground, he, the ground of happiness, and who wishes to enter the second ground. He further wishes to cultivate the dramas of the second ground. He should give rise to ten kinds of profound minds. He should bring forth ten profound minds and have true and actual recognition of Buddha dramas. What are the ten? What are the ten kinds of profound minds? They are a proper and upright mind. One's mind should be straight, not devious and crooked. As it is said, the straight mind is the way place. Proper means not having any deviant knowledge or deviant views. Upright means not having any deceitful thoughts. A compliant and yielding mind. The mind of the Bodhisattva should be compliant and yielding. It should not be obstinate or stubborn. A mind able to endure one is able to undergo and bear what is unendurable. The straight and upright mind represents the mind of giving. Why the compliant of yielding mind is holding precepts and the mind able to endure is patience. Being able to endure means the ability to be patient with the unbearable. The precepts one cannot hold on still must hold. No matter what, one cannot break the precepts.